Is anyone a recovered angry person? What changed? Met my wife who is an incredibly chill and level headed person. Becoming angry became an embarrassment. And I am slowly outgrowing it. Same here. My husband is so calm that it's annoying when I get angry and there's no response from the other side. What can one poor angry soul do after all? I changed my environment. I had a lot to bottle up for a reason. I changed where I lived, my work situation, and the people who surrounded me. Suddenly, the world was calmer and more peaceful, therefore I was calmer and more peaceful. Same thing happened to me. New country, new friends, new job. I'm almost balanced now. Cut off contact with abusive people, worked on building constructive interests and hobbies, and got into the habit of questioning the reaction each time anger started building up. The old habits took years to undo. Part of the problem was bad examples growing up, but the really far reaching thing was having a limited set of social skills for conflict resolution. So it really took observation and practice to figure out how else to solve things. There were setbacks, of course. The time to really be alert for old habits is during moments of stress. It's worth the effort, though. Ugh. I too suffer from poor conflict resolution skills. It's so frustrating too, because I'm in sales and can work out conflict professionally all day long. But when it comes to my marriage, my emotions just flood all logic from my brain and I can't think clearly or calmly. My girlfriend changed me. I used to have some anger issues. Quick to blow up and yell. Curse and would fight people from time to time. She's calmed me down a lot. I'm not quick to anger anymore. She used to get scared at times. She comes from a family who wouldn't yell if they were on fire. Been together for two and a half years now. Comma she comes from a family who wouldn't yell if they were on fire. Such a small thing but this made my night. P. My very calm and always forgiving so told me during an argument that my temper was unacceptable. He raised his voice to me and told me he wouldn't take it, and in 2.5 years that is the only I time I have ever heard him raise his voice, either to me or anyone else. It really took me outside of myself and I realized how absurd and toxic my temper had become. I was pretty much always mad about something. I would blow up in traffic every single day and yell to myself. Get really upset over petty co-worker drama. Get super mad in what should have been calm discussions with my so and find things to say that were really nasty and made me feel like I had bested the argument. Like I would go from 0 to 100 in less than a second and blow up over every grievance I could find. Even if it wasn't my bf's fault, I would blow up at him. Like if I dropped something heavy on my foot and it really hurt and he asked me if I was okay, I would snap so nastily at him. I've made a really big effort over the last few months to be less angry and it has dramatically improved my life. Driving to and from work I feel so much more relaxed. I let the idiots be idiots and don't get worked up over it. When I'm upset about something or get into an argument with my so, I think about what I want to say first, speak slower and in a normal voice, and really listen to him. I don't just immediately go for the jugular and try to belittle someone I love. If I see or hear a co-worker being an butthole, I'm just like ha ah, whatever. Why should I even care or get upset? I've even started to try to train myself to make my face a resting happy face instead of my typical resting bee face. Just changing my facial expression, even when I'm alone, makes a huge difference. Your post gives me an incredible amount of hope. Thank you. Started taking the train subway to work instead of driving. I show up to work in a good mood now, instead of in a murderous rage. Not me but my husband. I'd like to say he's less angry now because I loved him through some dark days but the real tipping point was when his then 7 year old son was talking about a cartoon character, can't remember who now, who is always angry like daddy is. People are scared of him. I've never seen such a pained look on his face. He started working on himself that day and hasn't stopped. That was 5 years ago and while not every day is perfect, our home life is much more calm and peaceful than it was. He has a great relationship with both our kids now and I'm not constantly walking on eggshells wondering what might set him off. Well I was depressed angry because I have lost an important person. I cut all my contact to my friends and gave up my hobbies. I discovered ballroom dancing. That honestly changed e dancing 5-6 times a week is great didn't expect to see this answer. That's really interesting. 
I was angry at the world after being hit by a drunk driver. I was left with at B and 3 broken vertebrae. After I had back surgery and got off the painkillers. I was genuinely happy to wake up each day and not have to depend on painkillers to do even the simplest of tasks. This change was furthered by finding out I could compete with the Paralympics in soccer. B. Stroke. CP. Being able to return to soccer allowed me to continue pursuing my passion, while getting to see the world on someone else's dime. I used to nerd rage a lot over video games which put me in foul moods constantly. I would snap at people and just generally be a very irritable short tempered person. I just grew up and became more self aware about what an activity was doing to me emotionally. I just stopped playing games if I'm not having fun. I also moved away towards single player games. The sad part is the industry seems to be pushing multiplayer like it's sliced bread. I hate that I am being forced to play games with people even though a decade ago I thought I wanted to. I quit my job which was very high stress. I moved to another city to be near my mom, and my daughter and her brand new baby moved in with me so I was no longer alone too. My blood pressure went down 30 points. I was no longer so critical of everything and almost 5 years later my granddaughter is my life. I work in a job now that I leave behind when I walk out the door and I can't wait to get home to her. We are 4 generations of females in the same city, spending time together at least 2x a week and my old co-workers probably wouldn't even recognize me and I'm okay with that. At first, I read that as my granddaughter is my wife, had to read that again. I'm a just started recovering angry person. I had a suppressed childhood. Not necessarily abusive but I wasn't ever allowed to be myself. Everything had to fall into my mom's principles of right and wrong and me asking the wrong question would cause her to get upset. This led to me bottling up everything I feel, good, bad, frustrated, etc. I realized over the past few months that a lot of the friendships that don't exist in my life are because of me. I bottle up everything and I'll release that emotion, which usually comes out as anger on the people closest to me. I have an absolute son of a best friend who cares enough about me to see through all the anger I throw at her and get down to why I actually feel so angry. She's gone on a couple week long vacations this year and I had a lot of time by myself to do some personal reflection and I realized how much bitterness and hatred I had towards people because I was never allowed to be myself. I'm not really sure where to go from here, but I'm making an active effort to spend deliberate time in self reflection, actively trying to live out the good aspects of my faith, loving people, and forgiving not only everyone around me. Forgive equals equals restoring relationships, just letting go of the bitterness and anger, but forgiving myself as well. I've noticed a change already. I'm not so sure about being angry as such but finding minimalism and meditation has made me calmer. I find I no longer get road rage or involved in arguments, or indeed start any. I had a lot of really bad things happen to me during my childhood. Over time I have just had to fully come to terms with the fact that I have a really big anger deep inside me and it would most likely be there for the rest of my life. Therapy has really helped and so has being vulnerable and honest with people instead of isolating and withdrawing into self pity. I took up boxing a year ago which is a huge stress reliever. Some days though the anger creeps back in and feels like it suffocates the life out of me. But now I know that anger is just a big boy emotion that tries to protect us by hiding our more vulnerable emotions, sadness or fear. I was a short fuse and pretty depressed throughout high school and college. I realized that my negativity was affecting the people around me, which really hurt. I stopped being angry but I was more depressed than ever. Then on one of those nights where you think and can't sleep, I looked for a reason as to why I should even try anymore. Looking back, I was very creative during my younger years and maybe I can use that talent to make something everyone can appreciate. About a month ago I started to learn the Unity game engine. Things have been feeling like they are getting better every week with these little accomplishments I'm making. Hopefully someday I can make my dream game happen. TL. Doctor I was inadvertently harming people around me. Became super depressed. Searched arduously for a reason to live and found one. I was angry. Proper punch holes in the walls angry. I grew up in an angry house. Angry siblings. Angry parents. That was just how we did things. Everything changed when someone I loved sat me down, told me how it made her feel, 
told me this wasn't right, and I had to own being angry. I don't think I've ever lost my temper since. My grandpa died. For reasons that I won't get into now I had had no relationship with him and, honestly, I hated him. I had not spoken to him in 5 years by the time my mom let me know that his cancer had spread rapidly. I didn't even know he had had cancer. That's how disconnected we were, and I gave her permission to give my number to his wife so we could talk, if he wanted. I really didn't want to talk to him, but I didn't want to stir crap up by refusing. My mom always tried to have a relationship with her dad, no matter how crappy he was to her. It was a Thursday when I found out, and he died the following Monday. What changed me was how empty it felt. I despise the man, and his effective abandonment of his daughter and granddaughter cut me very deep. It was one of those things that I'd cry over for a bit when I'd had too much to drink. In the few days between finding out he was dying and his actual death, I had almost revealed in the thought of getting to tell him all of the awesome things I had done with my life without his help, and without his knowledge. You made me feel worthless, but you were wrong that sort of thing. But then he died, and I didn't get to say anything to him about it. He died with my life no more involved in his than it had been for the previous 5 years. I realized that all of that hatred, anger, and pain, all of it went absolutely nowhere. And even if I had gotten to exact revenge, would that have changed anything about the past? Would it have even made me feel better? He was so out of my life at that point, that his death had zero actual effect on it. He had already been gone for years, but my anger was me trying to drag him back, and he never knew, and never will know. I was the only one who had suffered for it, because I wouldn't let him go. I am still a work in progress for sure, but from this I've learned that grudges are ultimately unproductive. Why should I care so much, even if negatively, about someone who didn't care about me? Why not invest my emotions in the people who do support me, and stop living under someone else's guidelines? I can't change their rules, but I can change mine. I don't have to play by their games. I do not want to live my life as a reflection of other people. From this, I have let go of a lot of anger. To paraphrase someone, holding a grudge is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. I now know how true this is. I got away from my family. As much as I love them, they are not good people. They are also frustratingly stupid. Not having to spend hours explaining very basic things does wonders. Things like we do need to have shampoo, milk, toilet paper, I'm not just trying to waste money. 100 and 150 equals 250, not 150 inches. Or if this made your sill sick and the dog won't even eat this we need to throw it out. Peanut butter is not that valuable. I thought I was going insane because they all think like this. It's baffling. Therapy. My therapist helped me a freaking lot. I used to get mad mainly at things I couldn't change or were not on my power. This led me to have an ulcer that fricked up my whole stomach. Now I can't drink coffee and soda. It's frustrating but it teached me a lesson. No need to worry and get mad at things that you can't change. Also, I don't want to be remembered as the guy who could never chill the frick out. I lost a few good friends due to this. Nobody makes you mad. Mad is a choice, mad is a decision. You get mad, 90% of the time you lose, and if you win you still lose something. My aunt an angry teen me. This really speaks to me. Thanks for sharing. I stopped playing League of Legends and other competitive online games and I'm just so much more relaxed. I find joy in things I didn't find joy in before. Types of music I would never listen to because they would pee me off more when I was angry. This multiplayer system of queuing you up with 4-5 random people and expecting you to play as a team needs to stop. It is so incredibly toxic and you can tell by the communities. As much as I dislike the games themselves, I'm happy to see the success of single multiplayer games like Fortnite and PUBG. Their communities seem more relaxed as well, at least compared to League, Seas, Go, Rocket League and Overwatch. I agree. T here's an immense difference between forming a team with some good close friends and just being thrown into a toilet bowl with some random 12 year olds. Slowly realized it's useless and draining to do constant comparisons and to be angry about things you truly can't control. Didn't happen overnight, and some injustices still cause a low boil, but as weird as it sounds, you can just decide to be happier. Oh god the comparisons one was the worst. Delete Facebook right now.
I still feel envy when I hear so and so is doing whatever amazing thing. But I guess it's good if I can channel it back into self improvement. I think I'm still an angry person but lately life has been wonderfully awesome. I guess a big thing that I think changed is that I've stopped dating for over a year and I just do me. That isn't to say I wasn't the problem but that the biggest change. A lot more time for me and just doing crap I want to do. A lot of thinking about what's really in my control and not just something I can influence. I figure it would take something new to really set me off now. TL. DR. Maybe I've got nothing to be angry about or maybe I'm over the old stuff. I dunno but I like how it is now. I had to work with a very angry guy who constantly complained and had outbursts and rants about everything that bugged him. He drove me crazy, but I realized that I was sometimes guilty of acting the same way. Seeing how ugly it looked from the outside motivated me to change. After years of telling people if you didn't make me feel that way I wouldn't have done it I realized that I am truly responsible for my actions. That it is I who choose how to act. I used to feel bad that something that seemed so obvious escaped me when I thought I was such an intelligent person. But now I just enjoy being free from the guilt I felt. And how much more enjoyable the interactions I have with the world around me are. One of my favorite pieces of advice is that I'm only responsible for how I act and how I react. I can't control how others behave. Understanding that has allowed me to take a hard look at how I was acting and to make changes for the better. The impetus for me getting my shiz together was a man breaking up with me. He cited my anger as a reason. Despite me consciously trying not to express anger towards him, my anger in general was still a deal breaker. I have never met anyone I've wanted to build a future with as much as this man. I was bitterly disappointed in myself and this aspect of myself and channeled my grief into changing. As for how I did it, therapy, both individual. It took me 3 tries to find a therapist that worked for me, keep trying, and group therapy in the form of an anger management class. Individual therapy is invaluable for understanding the triggers and foundations of your anger and other emotions. Some triggers are transient and simply who you are but others are unhealed hurts from your past, or old habits that no longer serve you. Therapy can help you identify these and work around them. It's very hard but valuable work. The group therapy was revelatory. It was amazing to me to feel like my experiences with anger weren't unique. Anger and other negative emotions get a bad rep. But they're natural and have their place in the world. Aside from this, mindfulness and meditation helped. I try to be very careful about what I say but also the pitch speed tone of voice I say it in. When I'm angry about something I try not to say anything at all. Because in those situations I tend to use words as weapons. And unfortunately I am very good at it. I'm trying to extend these lessons outside of stressful and angry situations and into my overall life now but it's a slow process. If you're in Vancouver and want to know more about the group therapy class, let me know and I'll pass you a rec. I started a mood stabilizing medication. I'm not one to preach about pills, but wow, did they help. My life went from happy sad angry sad happy angry to mildly content and relaxed. Every single thing used to irritate me and my temper would flare up at the most minuscule thing. Now, I'm much more likely to just let negative things happen, accept it, better myself from it, and move on. Medication. One of the symptoms of my depression is an explosive rage issue. Once I got on the meds, it pretty much stopped entirely. I can still feel it itching on the edges of my brain during particularly frustrating moments. But it's infinitely more manageable. Seriously, if you find yourself getting irrationally angry for little to no reason, talk to someone. Tell your doctor. Going on birth control actually helped me enormously. I started with PMS rage and it expanded to constant rage. And birth control puts a nice damper on it. I'm still a low-key angry person and looking back, I think I always have been. But my hormones aren't putting fuel on the fire anymore. I'm very bipolar and rapidly switch between happy, overly excited, sadness, and anger. I'm on mood stabilizers to help, but they only do so much. I struggle with anger so much, and it makes me angry I can't control my anger. The only thing that truly helps is anxiety pills, which my doctor won't prescribe to me. Unfortunately my last resort is getting them from my mom, who has a large prescription. I know it's wrong. But sometimes it's a last resort that truly helps. 
It's a scary place inside my head. My experience with anxiety meds is the more I use them, the more I need them. That's the sucky thing about anxiety meds, they are too dang addictive and hard to wean off of. I develop tolerance for them too quickly, I am H.O. The few days after I use them, I am like a freaking bear coming off of them, and I have to control myself from being a total jackhole. The struggle is real. Honestly the way I hurt people made me change. My GF didn't want to be around me when something big, or worse, small, would go wrong and I'd have a crap fit, or in my car. Realized I can only control the next steps and a clear mind will help me get less frustrated than if I'm pee off and bitter. You've got it. I quit smoking cigarettes, not because of the anger stuff, but for other reasons. I never smoked around my kids or wife. She knew though, and after the first month smoke free I realized I used to always be at some phase of a nicotine withdrawal rage, and that everyone around me wasn't always being an butthole. Now I'm a much happier person, especially in the mornings, which used to be my angriest time. Good for you. I'm cycling with Essex now and it sucks. I used to be incredibly angry, like in school throwing chairs at people for seemingly nothing angry. After high school I realized on some level that the external displays weren't helpful, so I internalized it a lot, ended up super depressed and grumpy passive aggressive. I ended up exploding a few times and driving away friends and dropping out of college. Eventually I learned that I needed to find the source of the anger and confront it. I ended up in counseling which helped a lot. Dropped a bunch of people I thought were friends but were actually just bringing me down. And life improved. Learned to focus less on the negative and build the positive. Now I'm in an awesome relationship with my best friend. If I get angry I'd hurt him. That makes it not worth it. No one causes your reaction. You're in control even in the moment. If he pisses me off. I don't want to fight. We talk it out or one of us makes us laugh and it's gone in an instant. Because it's just not worth it. I got out of an abusive marriage to a narcissistic woman with an equally narcissistic mother-in-law. My love language is touch. That doesn't mean sex. I need physical contact to feel loved. Hugs. Touches on my arm. Leg. Or back of my neck give me all the warm fuzziness. My ex would use that need to control and punish me. If I told a joke she didn't like she wouldn't have any physical contact of any kind for the rest of the day. If I dare disagree with her mother. Even if she was dead wrong. No contact for a week or more. Looking back I was always in flight or fight mode which caused anxiety. While suffering from anxiety I would lash out when it had been days, weeks, even months of no physical contact. This was of course all my own fault according to her and her mother. When I finally divorced her and she moved out I started to calm down. I haven't lost my crap since, but I am human and have gotten annoyed a few times. Thankfully the temper hasn't flared up, just expression of my annoyance. I'm now in a relationship with someone that speaks my love language fluently and without effort. I'm off the anxiety meds and have never been happier. You need to figure out the cause of your anger, or anxiety in my case, and make a change to get away from situations that make it worse. Good luck, but if I was able to do it after 13 years I'm sure you can. I saw both a therapist and a neurologist to uncover what my situation was so don't be afraid to seek help. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.